First John chapter four. Enough yakking here. Let's look at God's word tonight. First John chapter number four. As we look tonight specifically in verse number four, five, and six, where John writes to us, "Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. They are of the world; therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that Knoweth God, heareth us. He that is not of God, heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Two weeks ago on Sunday night, began this passage <clears throat> dealt with pretty much verses 1, 2, and 3 about how we're supposed to know what is right and to try the spirits to make sure that what we believe and what we follow is, is accurate, lines up with God's word, that it's genuine, that it's true. Around us, we will have false teachers. Around us, we will have false doctrine. Around us, we will have false ideas. But with us, we have the spirit of truth and the word of God, which is truth. It can guide us. But in the middle of this passage is that verse number four. Look at it again, if you would, please. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Would you read this last part with me? Say it with me at home or here. Because with me now, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Lord, I thank you for this time. Give us your grace and strength, Lord, in these next few moments. May you touch us. May you challenge us. Lord, help me to say those things that would be helpful. And I pray that if someone is struggling tonight, that you would meet the needs in their soul and their heart. Lord, if there's a Christian who needs victory, that you would give that and show that to them tonight. Lord, I pray that if there's someone who's under the sound of this broadcast, who's never trusted you as their Savior, that tonight would be the night that they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you. We'll give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Boy, what a tremendous verse. Stuck right here in the middle of 1 John. Stuck right here in the middle of this passage about discerning the spirits. We find out, and we find a tremendous promise, and we find out that we have already won. This is a powerful message. This is a good message. This is a power-filled message because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you turn on your television and you happen to find a what we call a TV preacher, you'll find messages like this concept, right? God wants you to win. And if you're not winning, it's not of God. God wants you to win and, and God wants you to prosper and you've already won. They preach that all the time. It seems like every time that I've turned it on, I try not to spend a lot of time watching them, of course. And it always seems to be linked up with, as God wants you to win, send me some money and I'll pray over it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I did get one comment back um, after the service on Easter. They said, Pastor, you're going to have to get better about asking for money on TV. <laughs> I'll, I'll work at it, okay? <laughs> no, no, no. But, but you find these messages you know, from these what would they call them? Prosperity gospel preachers. But the fact remains, the fact is found here, that we have already overcome the world, and what is inside of us is greater than what is in the world. There is a victory. We're tempted to quit, but we can win. We're tempted to feel defeated, but we have the victory. We sometimes think we've already lost, but that's false. We've already won. We have won. God says we have won, and we can win. You see, it's all about perspective. Perspective, how you view things. Is this a bad time or a good time? Is this a crisis? Is it crunch time? Is it crazy? Or is there potential? Is it a blessing-filled time? It's perspective. Someone said perspective was this. An airline pilot was flying over the U.S. And he called the local tower and said, we're passing over 35,000 feet can you please give us a time check? The tower said, well, what airline are you with? Where the pilot responded, well, what difference does it make? The tower responded, well, it makes a lot of difference. If you're with Delta Airlines, the time is 1600. If you're with United or American, it's four o'clock. If you're with Southwest, the big hand is on the 12, the little hand's on the four. And if you're with Spirit, it's 2020 perspective right what do you see do you see victory or do you see defeat yeah. do you see what God is doing what he can do what he wants to do or do you just see failure that's what the verse says ye are of God little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you 
He's bigger than any problem. He's larger than any mountain. He is the God of victory. A shoe manufacturer. Went to, sent two salesmen to Congo, West Africa, to go sell shoes. Undeveloped territory. They both wrote back, and the first salesman wrote back, and he said, Prospect here, nil. No one wears shoes. Well, the other salesman wrote back, and he said, Market potential terrific. Everyone is barefoot. What do you see in the coronavirus? What do you see when you're stuck at home? Oh, I'm stuck here. What was me? Or do you see a chance for God to do something amazing? Or how about this one? A young man, for the sake of his father, went out for track. He had, as the story goes, zero athletic ability. I've only met a few of those people in life. But as the story went, he, he, uh, his father had been a good miler in his day. And his first race was only a two-man race in which he ran against the reigning champion in the state who happened to be at his school. There's only two of them. He was badly, badly beaten. But not wanting to disappoint his father, the boy wrote home as follows. Dad, you'll, ha you'll be happy to know that I ran against Bill Williams, the best miler in the state. He came in next to last. And I came in second. <laughs> About perspective. You see, the Bible says there's an, a, a power that we can experience. We shall overcome because of God. We shall be victorious because of God. We shall see amazing blessings because of God. You say, Brother Howell, it doesn't always feel like blessings. It doesn't always feel like victories. Just a reminder that our feelings can be deceitful. Our hearts deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's Jeremiah 17, 9. Verse 10 of that passage tells us where the Bible says, I, the Lord. The Lord knows our heart. Our feelings can be deceit, de deceitful. I like this story of an old country preacher. He was challenged by a highly educated man about the Bible and about God. And he said to this old preacher, why is it that ye, you Christians always claim assurance of victory in battle in this life? And to which the old country preacher responded. He said, well, son, it says in the beginning of my Bible that God was in charge when things started up. And then I flipped to the end of my Bible, and when things run down, he's still in charge. So this old preacher said, I figure... There ain't nothing between the front and the back that can whoop him. Amen. Right now, we're between the front and the back, and nothing can whoop our God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What does this passage tell us? A few quick things here tonight. It tells us, first of all, of our heritage. You are of God, little children. We are of God. Our heritage is of God. There's a confidence because of our Heavenly Father. God is my Father. And if you're a Christian, God is your Father. And greater is he, your Father, all right, than anybody else's dad. See, that's a motivation to follow God. First Corinthians tells us, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and spirit, which are God's. A motivation to follow Him. As my Father, I want to do things that please Him, a motivation to fear Him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Not a, a fear of, uh-oh, what if he finds out, but a fear of, of reverence and worship to the God of my Father, the one who controls all things, who does all things and does them well. I want to please him more than I want to please anyone else. That's my heritage. God is my Father. In this power, we have a tremendous heritage. I may care what you think, but I want to mostly care what he thinks. You say, I don't like that message, Pastor Howell, that's all right. Does he like it? Yes. I don't like that stand. That's okay. Does, does he like it? Does he want that stand? I want to do things that please him. We have a heritage that is tremendous. We try to make decisions around, around the church that would please the Lord. Amen. They're not always popular, right? Now, I know for Pastor Lett, 44 years, his decisions were always popular, but I'm just a new guy. I've never faced, in all my time of pastoring, I've never faced a crisis quite like this before. Isn't God good, though? Y'all have been gracious, but God has been good. You know, it's not ideal circumstances. All right, we, we'd rather be together every single service, right? You know, that, that first service, it was kind of fun to show up to church in your pajamas, wasn't it? 
A little bit fun to be there and sit back in your lazy boy, but after a while, it gets a little bit old. After a while, you kind of miss the smiley faces and you miss the people who greet you at the door. You miss Brother and Cecil saying good morning, whether it's in the morning or at night. You miss the folks sitting in their same seat every single service, no matter what I say. You, you miss the smiles from those around the auditorium. You, you miss the encouragement you get from other church families and seeing your friends and your other, really your family at First Baptist Church. Maybe less than ideal circumstances, but God wants to give us the victory. He wants to do so much through this time. We've already seen some tremendous things. Like I mentioned with those other stories about people who watch TV on Easter, things that probably would not have been done if we had been in a regularly scheduled format. I doubt we would have been on TV if that had happened. Not that we wouldn't have wanted to or not wanted to. We wouldn't have even thought about it or crossed our minds. Been so busy doing something else. You see, God is doing something. Our heritage is tremendous, but then I see our help. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. John 14, 16, and I will pray the Father. He shall give you another comforter. Someone said it this way, I truly believe that most Christians ignore the supernatural in search of the spectacular. We have the supernatural with us, the supernatural helper, the supernatural strength, the one who has all the answers, the one who can lead us and guide us into all truth. It's a promise and it's a promise of power. It's a reality. See, God can do the impossible. The young boy was traveling to visit his grandparents on a train. He sat beside a man who happened to be a seminary professor. I've met them before. The boy was reading a Sunday school take-home paper. And the professor thought he'd have some fun with his little lad. And he said, young man, said the professor, if you can tell me something God can do, I will give you a big shiny apple. But this young lad thought for a few moments. And then he said, mister... If you can tell me something God can't do, I'll give you a whole barrel of shiny apples. You see, we have the potential. What can stand against us? Who can help us? The supernatural one, the Holy Spirit. It's our heritage, it's our help, but it's also our hope. Our hope, our victory is greater because it's already been overcome. John finishes up and he says, Many will be deceived, but you won't be deceived. That's what verse 6 tells us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. How can you have such a positive attitude right now? How can you be so optimistic? Because I'm not deceived. The Holy Spirit gives me a promise. I have a hope. How can you look on the bright side of things? Because I have God as my Father and His Spirit lives inside of me and He promises us the victory. What a tremendous hope. Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. You see, Dwight Eisenhower in battle said this, there are no victories at discount prices. And our victory comes the most expensive cost, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That wasn't a discount victory. God so loved the world, He gave His Son, Jesus. And because of Jesus and His precious blood, which He shed on the cross to pay for your sins and to pay for my sins, that is why you and I can have the victory. Not because I'm righteous. There's none righteous. No, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The only way we get the victory is because of Jesus Christ. If I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I can be saved. And if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, I encourage you tonight to make the night that you trust Jesus Christ. Maybe you've thought it too easy. Is it really that simple that I can ask Jesus to save me and he will? Yes, it's that easy. It's that easy. Will he take all my sins away? Every single one of them. The Bible says as far as the east is from the west. So far have he removed our transgressions. That was no discount price victory. That was the precious blood of Jesus Christ, which the Bible tells us is incorruptible. That blood is preserved forever and forever and forever. There was a general, World War II. General Abrams. One time he was surrounded by many troops. General Abrams 
was a famous general and the Abrams tank was named after him. I read a recently a historical fiction book and spoke of General Abrams as probably the best tank general that the U.S. has ever had. One time, though, that his troops and he were surrounded on all sides by the enemy. Does not say, but I'm assuming at that time to be the Germans. And with his typical optimism, this is what he told his officers. For the first time in the history of this campaign, we are now in the position to attack the enemy in any direction. And Christian, for the first time in history of this world, we now have the opportunity to attack the enemy in any direction. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do you have the victory? Do you have the spirit of victory? Or do you live in a spirit of defeat? Spirit of just crushing. Spirit of depression. God says, I'm bigger. And you have me on your side. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the victory that you have given to us, Lord, and promised through us. Lord, thank you for your greatness. Tonight, my friend, whether you're here at home, I wonder if God has a message of hope for you tonight. Perhaps you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You've never asked Him to save you from your sins. Can I encourage you to do that tonight? You can pray right where you're at. You can ask Him to save you. You can say something like this, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. The Bible says for all this. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. That he was buried and rose again the third day. Would you please save me and take me to heaven? I trust in you and you alone. And wherever you're at, if you pray that and mean that from your heart, there's not a special magic in the words. Belief comes from the heart. But if you pray that and mean that from your heart, the Bible says that God will save you. The ultimate victory. Victory over death in hell apart from God. My friend, if tonight you've never trusted Christ, would you do that tonight? Would you pray with me out loud or in your heart? Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. And that he was buried and rose again the third day. Would you save me and take me to heaven when I die? I trusted him and him alone friend if you prayed that and you meant that and the bible says that you shall be that you are saved i'd love to send you something to help you in your walk as a christian but as many as received him to them gave you power to become the sons of god once we accept christ as our savior we become a child of god and if you prayed that and meant that would you contact me on your screen, you'll see a phone number, you'll see a website, you'll see an email address. Drop me a quick note, leave me a quick message. Say, Pastor, I prayed that. I'd love to send you a free book, help you grow as a Christian and rejoice with you. How about you, Christian? Where are you at in your spirit? If you're a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit. You have the victory. Are you living in that victory? Do you live like greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world? Or do you live like you've lost already? A perspective. Let God show you what he can do through you. Especially during a time like this. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your victory and for your power. Lord, you are such a good God. Lord, I pray that there are Christians who are struggling right now, maybe in their spirit of, and they have a spirit of defeat. Lord, that you would help them see the truth from your word that your spirit brings victory. And Lord, if there's someone who listened tonight and is not sure they're on their way to heaven, and Lord, they did not pray just not as they would tonight before they lay their head down to sleep and they trust you as you, their Savior. Lord, I love you. Thank you for what you're doing and what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen.